these very same people are the quickest to cry racism at the slightest provocation or for no reason at all. There's no systemic racism, there is no law, there is nothing that says that I can't do something as a black person that you can do. We're honoring all of the great white men who are being smeared and defamed and torn down. If you listened to any of the oral arguments brought before the Supreme Court on Monday, you probably came away with the same concern that I have. The court seems ready to rule that the race-conscious admissions programs at Harvard and the University of North Carolina are unlawful. Should such a ruling come down, it would effectively do away with affirmative action and overrule decades of precedence. According to Adam Liptak of the New York Times, such a decision would jeopardize affirmative action at colleges and universities around the nation, particularly elite institutions, decreasing the representation of black and Latino students and bolstering the number of white and Asian ones. If the court does away with affirmative action by the end of its current term, it will represent the second time in the space of a year that its conservative supermajority has jettisoned decades of precedent to overturn a policy that has helped define American life. But as its decision in June, eliminating the constitutional right to abortion made plain, members of that majority have not hesitated to take bold steps on divisive issues. While I agree with Mr. Liptak, I don't believe his assessment goes far enough. You can include attacks on voting rights and redistricting. As previously noted in this space, decisions regarding fair congressional maps in Alabama and Louisiana, among other states, are being held up by the court so as to not interfere with the midterm elections. This means that in both Alabama and Louisiana, minority and majority districts that have the best opportunity to produce African American representatives have been limited in a way that curtails justice. Regarding voting rights, the court, with Chief Justice John Roberts leading the way, voted in the 2013 Shelby v. Holder decision to overturn the most significant portions of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 by removing from states with a history of racial discrimination the responsibility of clearing any changes to their voting practices with the federal government. The current shift in the federal judiciary that will likely result in the ultimate elimination of affirmative action, except in the most diluted and feckless form imaginable, got huge help from the four years that President Donald J. Trump was in office. In addition to the three Supreme Court justices placed by the Trump administration, it was also responsible for 54 appointments to the Federal Court of Appeals, 174 appointments to the United States District Courts, three appointments to the United States Court of International Trade, 10 appointments to the United States Court of Federal Claims, seven appointments to the United States Tax Court, six appointments to the United States Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims, two appointments for the United States Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces and one appointment for the United States Court of Military Commission Review. Also, there was an appointment for the United States Territorial Courts. That makes for a total of 261 appointments to the federal courts in one four-year term. By comparison, in the eight years of the Barack Obama administration, 329 judges were appointed, while 80 appointees were not confirmed by a conservative-controlled United States Senate, most notably Merrick Garland, current Attorney General of the United States. Mr. Obama was only able to secure two Supreme Court justices over that eight-year span. But this dilemma has long been planned by conservatives and has not been adequately responded to by progressives. Writes Jackie Combs in a June 22, 2021 article that appeared in Time magazine, while Republicans lately have been attacking Democrats for plotting to pack the federal courts with like-minded judges, their party has been doing it for years through bare-knuckle tactics in the Senate and 
animated base of voters and an institutionalized and well-funded pipeline for judges, Republicans have stocked the federal bench at all levels with conservatives who share the right's support for whacking at the wall between church and state and at the powers of federal regulatory agencies, banning abortion and expanding gun rights. Writing prophetically 16 months ago, Calms warned future cases pose opportunities for the Supreme Court's conservative six-pack not only to roll back abortion rights, done, but also to expand gun rights, done, promote freedom of religious expression even in cases of discrimination, done, and curtail affirmative action as well as regulators' powers to enforce laws for clean air and water, worker safety, and more. Done, done, and done. Kentucky Senator and Republican leader Mitch McConnell has made confirming conservative judges his singular focus. In 2018, he described his goal at a gala of the Federalist Society. We must do everything we can for as long as we can to transform the federal judiciary because everything else we do is transitory. Right calms, McConnell's monomaniacal attention to the courts reflects that of conservative voters who've been passionate about demanding right-leaning judges since the days of the liberal Warren Court in the 1950s and 60s, with its landmark rulings on civil liberties, voting rights, contraception, and separation of church and state. Such motivated voters give Republicans an edge in Senate confirmation battles. While McConnell blocked the appointment of Garland to the Supreme Court at the end of the Obama presidency, he pressed hard to fill all vacancies after the Trump defeat in 2020. McConnell vowed he'd leave no vacancy behind. Not since 1897 had the Senate confirmed a judicial nominee of a defeated president, but it confirmed 14 of Trump's. By the way, in the final two years of the Ronald Reagan administration, 80% of his federal nominees were confirmed. 69% for George H.W. Bush, 67% for George W. Bush, even 65% for Bill Clinton. But for Barack Obama, that number fell to 29%. And that source is the Washington Post. For those who still need to be convinced that voting matters, consider this. Senator McConnell is on record as saying that if Republicans regain a Senate majority in the 2022 elections, it's highly unlikely he'd allow President Biden to fill a Supreme Court vacancy in 2024. He wouldn't even commit to doing so in 2023. This explains in part why Republicans are so intent on helping clearly unqualified candidates like Herschel Walker and Medmet Oz get elected. A shift of only one seat in the Senate can shift the trajectory of this nation for generations. A reminder of basic civics. Appointments to the federal bench are for life. The only way to remove such appointments, once confirmed by the Senate, is through an impeachment process that is scarcely used and even more rarely successful. The president makes these appointments and the Senate confirms them. The House of Representatives has no say in this process. Proposals to expand the Supreme Court past its current number of nine or to set term limits on the Supreme Court appointments have been met with skepticism from progressives and threats of retaliation from conservatives once they gain the upper hand in the Senate and the White House. For now, we are left with the one option that conservatives can't take away from us. We can pray about this matter. Eternal God, we pause this evening to petition you on behalf of the federal judicial system of this land. In light of the attacks on voting rights, redistricting, affirmative action, and abortion, we are gravely concerned about the loss of freedom that we and our progeny will enjoy. We ask for your Holy Spirit to prevail upon the federal system and the judges that comprise it. May they serve with integrity and fidelity to their charge of fairness, equity, and equality. Grant to them the prescience and courage to make wise decisions and then to act upon them. Let them not hinder your work because they fear making decisions or lack the courage to act upon the decisions that they make. May they not be afraid, dear God, to stand for what is right even when the tide seems to be against them. We plead for the action of the Holy Spirit to prevail in all their deliberations. We're mindful of the words of Micah, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. 
We pray for that kind of humility, that kind of obedience, that kind of spirit to prevail in our judicial system as represented by those who sit on the bench. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen.